हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज अनदर वीडियो ऑन क्लॉक फ्रीक्वेंसी मल्टीप्लायर इन फैक्ट इट इज अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय प्रीवियस वीडियो वेयर आई एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल फ्रीक्वेंसी डबलर इफ यू हैव नॉट गॉन थ्रू दैट वीडियो प्लीज गो थ्रू इट आई विल गिव इट्स लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सेक्शन एज वेल एज इन द आई बार सेक्शन एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो गेट इट्स लिंक एट द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो इफ यू गो थ्रू दैट वीडियो देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू अप्रिशिएट इट एट द एंड ऑफ दैट वीडियो I told you that we cannot control the delay very precisely and I told you that I will explain the impact of delay variation on the output signal of multiplier and that is what we are about to discuss in this video now without wasting much time let us get started friends let me recap what we discussed in my previous video there we discussed frequency doubler logic that is frequency multiplication by two logic and this is a logic that multiplies input frequency by 2 here we need to delay our input clock frequency by t by 4 and then we need to apply both the signal to this xor gate and in turn this xor gate will give us a frequency which is multiplied version of the input clock frequency from the waveform also you can see that this is f in which is input clock frequency and this is delayed version of this input clock and then we are applying both these signals to this xor gate and finally you get f out which is multiplied by 2 of the input clock frequency and at the end of that video we discussed that we are about to discuss the impact of delay at the output of this multiplier and in this video we are about to discuss the impact of delay on the output of the multiplier this is very important and very interesting to understand Let us consider the first case where delay is less than t by 4. So my signal that is t by 4 will be delayed but slightly less than t by 4. Now if you put a XOR gate at f in and t by 4 signal, you will get f out, which will be again a frequency multiplied by 2 only. There is no change, but your duty cycle will be changed. Here your duty cycle will be less than 50 percent because t on time is reduced. If you see this f in this is t by 4, put a XOR gate 101110011000. So if you see t off is quite more than t on, so duty cycle is reduced if delay is less than t by 4. Now let us consider the second case. If delay is more than t by 4, so this signal will be delayed but slightly more than t by 4. Again, we are applying it to XOR gate. So, if you see, this is one, this is zero, this is one, this is one, this is one. Out will be zero. Again, f in is zero, t by four is one, out put is one, zero, zero, zero. So, if you observe this waveform very clearly, t on is increased. That means duty cycle is increased. So, conclusively, we can say that by controlling the delay. frequency will be unchanged but we can control the duty cycle of the output signal or in other words if you cannot control the delay very precisely your frequency will be still multiplied by 2 only but your duty cycle will be changed it will not be exactly 50% if you can tolerate the duty cycle change then yes you can use this method also for frequency multiplication if you need 50% duty cycle very precisely then this method is not for you then you have to go for pll dll or clock managers inside the fpj domain friends this is the last section of our lecture where we will discuss how we can control the delay with the help of delay chain and this diagram i have taken from one of the ieee paper and it is very interesting to understand this is a delay chain and this delay chain can help us to get a desired delay This particular circuitry is nothing but it is just to add a delay to this input clock so you can see and then this is applied at the input of this XOR gate as we discussed in our previous slides also. Each D represents a delay element this can be a buffer or it can be a D flip flop which can work at very very high clock so you can see. Friends we are using multiple delay elements this input signal is applied to the first delay element and after a certain delay it gives its input at its output and then it is applied at the second delay element and again after a certain delay it will give its output and then again it is applied at the next delay element and so on 
and output of each delay element is applied at the input of this multiplexer and the, with the help of this select line we can select out of one of the delay element and that is applied at the input of this XOR gate. Let us say if I choose to apply out of second delay element at the input of this XOR gate then I can choose it from this select line. From this discussion we can deduce that with the help of these select lines we can control the delay of this delay chain and which in turn will control the duty cycle of our frequency multiplier. Friends with this I am going to close this video and I hope that this would be quite interesting and informative for all of you. If you also like this video please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section. And in future we are going to create many such videos so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.